Alrighty. Howdy, neighbors, and welcome back to the Divine Speaker. Last time, Leo joined our party. That's the that's the long, red-haired guy, uh, and he's a dick. And I have decided that in this dating game, he will be my romantic partner. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. I'll find somewhere comfortable. One went in the opposite direction. I just saved, so here we go. It's a little worried about Leos going off by himself with his injuries. But nothing happened to him. We wouldn't find out until tomorrow morning. Plus, I almost don't want to admit it, but I'm scared. He still has those weapons on him, so I want to keep an eye on him. We can sneak off in the middle of the night, tell everyone where we are. Everyone should be okay, right? After glancing back toward Fawn, I followed in the direction that Leos had gone only a moment ago. Leos! Feck! <laughs> Took a minute to find my way over to him. He was perched on the edge of the lake, upon a large rock. I tried to sneak up on him, but his eyes quickly found mine before he got too close. And here I was, thinking I could get an evening of peace and quiet. Oh, sorry. I can go back if you want. Sit down. You wouldn't want to wake up your little friend, would you? Sit down on the other side of the rock. Let me set distance between us. Uh, of course not. In the silence. Awkward. Uh. God, this is awkward. We just fall asleep quickly. I didn't think it this. I didn't think it this far through. What am I meant to say? So, uh. Why did you come over here by yourself? He asked me for a moment before turning his attention back to the water. What? You want me to be all cuddly with you and your forest, pal? I'm good. Thanks. Does it really even matter? I, I guess not. But we're all stuck out here in the same situation. Nowhere to go, no one else to rely on. We might as well try and get along, right? Did you hit your head earlier, or are you actually that much of an idiot? I mean, it could be both. What? Ugh. Pushed me down hard, and my back hit the rock with a thud. Ouch! And then soon he was above me, peering down into my face. The way he was looking at me, I felt like I shouldn't move an inch, and I couldn't. It was like he'd frozen me with just a glance. I was completely cornered. I'm sorry, but maybe you've forgotten the reason that I'm out here. Oh, I didn't forget. The reason I'm stuck with the two of you fucking idiots in the first place. I'm sure you thought you'd come keep an eye on me, just in case I did something in the middle of the night, right? Are you too dumb to realize that it just puts you in more danger? Do you really think that you being here makes me less dangerous? <laughs> the prey serves itself up on a silver platter. He reached down to the pouch, secured on his leg. We both knew what he had in there. The daggers that Fawn and I stupidly hadn't taken from him. He moved one from his pouch and held it above my face. He raised a brow at my silence. Oh, so now you choose to shut up. I mean... You won't do it. Excuse me? What makes you think you're so special? What makes you think you're so much better than the rest of the people I've killed? It was a dangerous look in his eyes, a coldness, also a fierceness. Passion and longing, but for what? You won't do it. I break eye contact. I tried with all my might to hide the nervousness I felt. I thought about this a little bit before. Rip closer looked different. Softer and more delicate. Everything apart from his eyes. And why not? Well, it wouldn't be difficult. One smooth cut through your windpipe and you wouldn't even be able to scream. Oh, how I'd enjoy listening to you gasp and cough as the blood flows from your throat. Oh, the thought gives me great pleasure. Hmm. Okay. Not what I need to know, but you know, you do you. The pipsqueak wouldn't even know what happened until he finds you face down in the lake tomorrow. <laughs> P 
be my guest. Go on, do it. With a tilt of my head, I smiled up at him. You would have already done it if you were going to. I'm not scared of you. Truthfully, he terrifies me. He doesn't need to know that, though. <laughs> Whatever. His body disappeared from above me as he moved away. I turned my head to check on him. He was laying on a rock not far from me, staring up at the sky. Instead of moving, I stared up and pushed down. For a time, the only sound was the gentle trickling of water. It says as it starts to rain? What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, well, here we go. <laughs> the adrenaline was already beginning to wear off. With everything that happened, I couldn't help but be tired. I let out a big yawn and stretched out my arms. Where we're headed. I hope we can get there without any more problems. Go to sleep, Rain. His voice startled me. Suddenly calling my name like that. I thought he was already asleep, but apparently not. He was still staring up at the star-filled sky and moved. C can I ask you a question? I can't stop you. Even if I wanted to. D do you hate me? Hate you? Why? What am I even saying? Impression of Laos. Honestly, he seems pretty shitty. But surely there's something more to him beyond that. You'd have to hate someone to kill them, right? <sighs> no. You don't have to hate someone to kill them. You can kill without feeling anything for the other person. You can kill people that are important to you, too. Aw, oh, damn, dude, no! Why would anyone do that? Who knows? Good night. Good night. I closed my heavy eyelids. Surprisingly, it didn't take long for me to drift off. <laughs> what kind of an achievement? <laughs> Truth. Find it. Judgment. From the gods. With a jolt, my eyes open at the glowing morning light. Hands and brow felt sweaty. Good morning, princess. Finally awake, I see. <laughs> Hello, princess! <laughs> Me, oh my! Uh. His voice boomed loudly in my ears. He was sitting next to me, so closer, basically touching. S sorry. What's gotten you so jumpy? Uh, no, it's nothing. I just... We should find Fawn. Watch me silently for a moment before standing up next to me. Your little friend might not be happy that you abandoned him last night. The two of us found our way back to where we left Fawn the night before. He was leaning against a tree, looking out at the lake. We approached, he wouldn't look at me. Uh, Fawn? Are you okay? Oh, y yeah. Just... tired. God, the sun rose ages ago. We should have been long gone by now. I look closely at Laos. His face is a little ashen, and he has shadows under his eyes. Uh, how are you feeling today? How do you think I'm feeling? Uh, not great. Then why did you bother asking? Oh. <sighs> fine, I'm... Feeling fine, tired, and a little sore, but it's not the worst injury I've ever had. He really doesn't look fine. He's much too proud. He won't admit. He won't admit it even when he needs help. Um, we should check both of your wounds before we leave. And drink. It might be a while before we find more drinkable water. It's great to know that not everything the pipsqueak says is ridiculous after all. <laughs> <sighs> These two are like cat and mouse. Fawn doesn't do anything but to defend himself, and Leos just happily chases him. Anyway, how much further do we have to go? It's about a two-day walk from my house, so if we leave now, then we should be close by sunset. It only took us a few minutes to prepare ourselves for today's trek. Put my hands together to tighten my collar around me. This time of morning, the wind was really biting. I know it's a good thing that we're not anywhere close to Aretha Cavella, but it still hurts to be so far away from my home and the people I care about. Can't help but feel like we're going in one massive circle, no one in sight, and for no purpose. 
that we'll be running away like this forever. <clears throat> Even if we get to where Fawn's leading us, then what? More forest? Are three of us meant to live out our days in some treehouse in harmony? I don't see that happening. If we manage to survive, what can I even do? It was like yesterday, we walked until we could barely walk anymore. Rather, we walked until I could barely walk anymore. Fall seemed used to it, and despite Leos' injuries, he was getting around fine. He was actually looking brighter than before. Someone was already high up in the sky. Even when I put my hand up to block it, because the sunlight spilled with the gaps in my fingers and got into my eyes. My lungs felt like they were burning, my legs felt heavy like lead. Am I really this unfit? At home we have a garden that I work in. It's not nearly as intensive as this. Uh, guys... I really think... I need a quick break. I could barely get a word out through my panting. Oh. On respect toward me. I'm so sorry. You should have said earlier if you needed a break. Why don't we stop here for a while? I don't think there's too much further to go after this anyway. You don't think? Why bother stopping if it isn't much further? Um, he's obviously struggling, so... <clears throat> then he just needs to keep up. I don't think... <laughs> I'll stop dead in our tracks. What was that? Vaughn moved for us all to get down. I think the footsteps grew louder, closer, along with the sounds of laughter. Is that a group of people? Out here walking and chatting. I opened my mouth to ask, but Fawn put his finger to his lips. I don't know who they are, so it's better if they don't know we're here. When I looked towards Laos, I could see his narrowed eyes darting from place to place. He was as confused as I felt. People. This far out. Surely not. The fact that we're here is unheard of, but other people too. And did you see the size of his coin purse? <laughs> As if he'll be missing it. Can't miss anything when you're already kicking around the abyss. From the bushes, we could hear thunderous laughter coming closer to us by the second. Couldn't say quite anymore. Who are they? Shush. I'll stop and listen. One of them asking if they heard that. Yeah. From over there. Something shuffling about. Ah, oh, crap. Crunch, crunch. Whoever it was was slowly getting closer. But I felt numb, a dull ache in my ears from the sound of my own heartbeat. What should I do? How do Damn I- Damn it. Why the hell are you two so fucking stupid? What? Before I could do anything, he already bounced to his feet a dagger in each hand. Well, well, well. Looks like we got another one wanting a lighter purse. We'll be happy to take it off your hands. We're lucky today, boss. Ain't usually no one around here. <laughs> Try me. Yes, sir. He spat in their direction. As if you could ever touch me with that blade of yours. I doubt you even know which end to hold. Wait, he's still injured. I have to help him. That's was shaking. I wanted to jump and stand with him. I could barely breathe. I took a moment to breathe in and out slowly. Finally, drum my ears calmed down a little. What are you calling me? Ah, both hard of hearing and a bumbling oaf. What a delightful combination. Hey, you know, it happens. I poked my head out of the bushes just in time to see the group of men that else was facing. They shuffled about angrily. I see at one another at the one in the center. Must be their leader. I'm sure they aren't used to him being assaulted like this. <sighs> Tough words coming from someone that's outnumbered. My boys are gonna chew you up. He was getting redder and redder, and his jaw was clenched shut. I moved to my feet and rushed to the other side. What are you doing? He was complaining. I grabbed one of the knives he had strapped to his side and held it out in front of me. He, he's not alone. I'll protect him. <laughs> Silence. I broke the sound of Leos sighing quietly. How long after that? With <laughs> leader burst in laughter as the entire crew joined in too. <laughs> We have ourselves a knight in shiny armor. <laughs> we didn't know you brought your boyfriend. <laughs> Even more gold for us then. Put my hands around the point of blade. Full metal almost stung my skin. I have never even held one before, let alone used what one. What are you doing? Get out of here! No! I'm going to help you! No! 
A bunch of metal passed directly in front of my eyes. I just managed to fall back in time to avoid it. All the air left my lungs as I hit the ground hard. A second later, the same knife came down to me from above. and have time to react. I try to shut and shield my face. The blow never came. Through my eyes, I saw my assailant go skidding across the dirty forest floor. With Fawn on top of him. Did Fawn just tackle him? Boys. There's no time to think about it. I took my feet and pulled Fawn up from the ground, treating back to San Close to hey, mouse boy. Fauna plucked the dagger that was thrown out to him, right out of the air. It ran at us, screaming and waving the weapons around like madmen. I gripped the dagger tighter in my hands. Holding is one thing. Can he use it to hurt someone? First two went directly for Laos, since he was the one who insulted their boss. That left two others to deal with. He stood back, watching and shouting. They circled around Laos, smirking and holding up their swords. What you gonna do, pretty boy? <laughs> it happened in an instant. Hello? This one charged at him, and Laos quickly kicked him with the stomach and sent him flying through the bushes. Without even a glance, he threw one of his daggers he was holding in the direction the man had been kicked. But it sounded like he threw the bushes and must have hit. He moved gracefully across the forest floor. The second man ran toward him. He dodged the blow so easily. It was like he was going easy on him. He ducked and leaned out of the way of each swing. Stop moving around so much! Get better at moving! The man's swings were becoming wild and erratic. No rhythm or thought. I have no knowledge of swordplay, but even I could tell he was doing badly. The spoke on his face, Laos just dodged him every time. Time again. As if he was playing with him. Every time he missed, his face went a deeper shade of red. All I could do was watch. I wanted help, but my legs felt so heavy that I couldn't even make a single step forward. <sighs> then he fell to the ground, clutching at his hand. Rats around him was splattered with flecks of blood, and then I had a pain groans. I also looked down at the man with a grin on his face. Get up, shithead. Weren't you boys gonna chew me up? I'm waiting. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole. When he could first speak, he was swung his leg out and kicked the man straight across the face. Fell onto his back, and he didn't make any other effort to get up or argue. Ah, uh, definitely like you more when you're like this. You're much more agreeable when you can't talk. Poor baby. Out cold. Let's see if your friends can do any better, huh? He is terrifying. He is amazing. He also looks like a completely different person. Up until now, he seemed like a smug asshole, but... He can both talk and walk. Laughing, covered in blood. There was something else there. Something else behind his cold eyes. The way he darted around and fought. He wouldn't even know that he was injured. His eyes were wild. Concentrated only on one thing. Killing. And death. He spun again and again, quickly digging his dagger into the shoulder of a different attacker. The same man that Fauna tackled earlier, back for another go. I couldn't take my eyes off of Laos, as he was taken over by bloodlust. He pushed his attacker to the floor, stabbing him over and over again and throwing him face. What covered Laos' hands, but he still didn't stop. Also beside me, I locked on the same horrific scene. I wanted to look away so badly, but I couldn't. Brain. <laughs> One pushed me backward into the bushes that we had jumped out of just a couple minutes ago. So before setting myself on a tree trunk, it was in time when I saw the final man swing at fallen. It was the one. No, oh, it was the one talking lots earlier, the boss of the group. Fawn backed and dodged the attacks. His movements were much slower than Laos's. The difference between the two was obvious at a glance. I barely had time to dodge, let alone time to attack. Played with the dagger that was still in my hands. Could I actually use this? Possible to kill someone. Is it okay to kill someone to save yourself? Someone you don't know. I have a choice. And I can't let him hurt Fawn. With each step, my courage faded even more. I didn't know how to fight. 
how to block and defend myself, how to hurt someone like that. The thing I could do to help is there. If I could do anything, Fawn was thrown to the ground with enough force to make him cry out. Sit victoriously over Fawn's body. We don't do something now. Stop! Wait! Don't hurt him! Ah! I'd almost forgotten about you. Turn its attention toward me, and I instinctively took a step back. Look down at Fawn. Seemed a little rattled, mostly unharmed. At least he's safe for now. He took another step toward me, anger crossing his face before changing to a smile. He thinks I'm an easy target. And he is not wrong. B b b leave us alone! He raised his voice. Tell me that we were outnumbered. That his pals would finish up the other two soon. Pals, really? Strange that I can't see any around. Rain, get away from him. Juan pushed himself back up on his knees. His face was suddenly serious. He was within arm's reach now. He was nowhere to run. Us was busy to one side, fall on the other, behind me on the trees. Be able to reach me, no matter where I went. Took a final step back, came in contact with the tree trunk, as I managed to draw him away from Fawn. I could just buy him enough time to get out of here. My eyes were shut, I clutched a dagger in my, to my chest and prayed for a miracle. Leos! Fawn's scream echoed throughout the entire forest, and something it came, and everything came to a standstill. What the? I waited for the touch of the boss's sweaty fingers, but it never came. Nothing happened. Over my eyes, there was no one in front of me. He said he laid on a stumble to the grass a few feet away. I was stood behind him, glaring behind his knitted brows. He looked absolutely livid. If you lay a single one of your disgusting fucking fingers on either one of them, I'll remove them from your body. I'll snap off every single one of them. <clears throat> in one hand, he still holds the dagger, but in another, with some kind of long leather rope. The other end was wrapped around the attacker's ankle. He just dragged him off his feet. Thank the gods, we didn't strip Laos of all his weapons after all. Fully fond approached the man laying on the ground. He knelt down beside him and flipped the man over, so he was facing upward. Don't you dare speak to Rain like that. His back was to me, so I couldn't see his face, but his voice was cold. He leaned to even closer to the man. Ooh, I'm so fucking scared. The pansy boy's gonna kill me. Killing you would be too kind. Oh my goodness! With a thud. Fawn punched the man in the face. <laughs> Look at Leos's face! He whirled and howled, holding his nose and thrashing around. Blood poured out from between his fingers, pulling the grass that lay underneath him. Fawn? It was surprising. <laughs> Even Leos looked astonished. He turned around and it's the look on his face. Y yes? Uh. Uh. Fucking asshole! Oh, you wait till I get my hands on- ah! Lewis flung his remaining knife into the man's calf. Close quickly turned a deep breath. Was I speaking to you, filth? I don't remember saying anything to you. Oh, I am using these lines in D&D. &D. I swear to God! <laughs> They're so perfect. Oh. I... It's okay, Fawn. I looked down at his bloody fist. His press look on his face. I didn't. The man rolled around. He's really trying to grab onto someone. I was kicked him back over with a thud. Things aren't looking so good for you now, eh? Hey, well, where did all those friends of yours go? I... Oh, wait, that's right. I killed them. <laughs> There's so much sass to this man. <laughs> Ugh. Leos knelt down beside the man and pulled the dagger out of his leg. Blood ran down the edge of the dark metal. He pulled the boss up by his greasy hair. Leos smirked at the way he struggled. Good night. Sweet dreams. Put the leather rope around his throat. Well, wait, is he going to? 
Just turned red before turning purple. They desperately tried to claw out the rope wound around his throat. Wait, Leos! What? Killing him is too easy. You don't have to kill him. Let's just get out of here, okay? Hmm. Saw a flicker of emotion cross Leos' face. Hesitation? I'm not sure. It's the first time I've seen an emotion other than lust for battle on his face throughout this whole ordeal. I know these bad people. Really, I know that. Here their bodies were spread out over the grass hadn't moved. Are they dead? Injured? I don't know. I if it's to protect me. I didn't want Leos to keep killing. I dropped the weapon I was holding and took a deep breath. The muscles in my arms ached despite my lack of involvement. Okay, I have no reason to be scared anymore. I put my shaky hand on Leos' shoulder. He turned his eye toward me, a strange look on his face. It's fine. You can let him go. We're okay now. <sighs> Let's just go. This man isn't worth our time. <sighs> Fine. He's not worthy of being killed by me anyway. Yeah, kill better men for less. I was immediately a look over his hair. Then I came crashing to the ground. With the rope removed around his neck, he gasped for breath and crawled de desperately away from us. A purple bruise around his neck. That wouldn't be going away anytime soon. You were lucky these two are so forgiving. If I ever see you again, I'll gut you where you stand. Understood? Yes, sir. <laughs> Quick kick to his. What? I could not read. A quick kick to his behind left the boss face down in the mud. This must be the most unlucky day of his life. <laughs> that wasn't necessary. Oh, but fun nonetheless. Valid. Lightly, I tugged at Leo's sleeve. Let's get out of here. Grab your knives. Bent down to pick up his thrown weapons and quickly glided back over to me. Every step was smooth, like he was walking on clouds. My crazy look in his eyes was gone, but a smirk replaced it immediately. What are you so happy about? He bent down until we were eye level with each other. The look of terror in someone's eyes when they realize they're outmatched is like nothing else. Oh, they talk big, but when it comes down to it, I'm nothing but amateurs. Vaughn looked around a battlefield, back to his usual self. Are... are the rest of them dead? Who knows? I feel like you would. That depends on how good of a shot you think I am. Uh, death isn't something to laugh at. You shouldn't take it so lightly. Really? Because only a moment ago, you seemed like you'd be up for killing that fat oaf. But I guess at the end of the day, someone like you would never understand what it feels like. They also have to stand over Fawn, peering into his face. Or would you? No, I... That's enough! Please, I just want to leave. I can't look at this any longer. Why do you make it all about yourself, jerk? Uh... <sighs> okay, let's go. I don't think we're too far from the edge of the forest now. After all of that, I felt so worn down. My mouth and throat were dry, and the adrenaline was only just beginning to leave my system. If he says the edge of the forest is close, then sure. The edge of the forest is close. I have no energy to argue. If it means I can sit down for a minute, they can tell me anything. I left the area, following Fawn back the way we came. So... What were they doing out here? They seemed like a band of thieves. And not very good ones. D did you take the gold then? As for why they were out here... I'm not sure. This is the first time I've been this far. Wait, this is the first time you've been here and yet you're leading us so confidently? <laughs> See, he's full of shit. He's been leading us in circles the entire time. No, I definitely know that this is the right way. My friends told me to go this way. Friends? Fantastic. This is when I was thinking that Leos needed another reason to tease Fawn. Wait. My friends. 
the animals that live with me. <laughs> lived with you? Uh, that was fucked up. The animals that lived with me, they helped me out. Oh, they helped you. <laughs> well, of course they did. Did they cook and clean for you as well? Dress you and bathe you? <laughs> what? No, of course not. They mostly just kept me company. I made sure they were safe, and they did the same for me. Oh. And sometimes they lead me places. Ugh. We're a family, and we look out for each other. At least, we did. I wish I could introduce you to them. I just hope they're okay. Oh. Poor lambs. Uh. What? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> you, you're telling me we're following you around because a bunch of animals told you this was the right way. Are, are you insane? Are you actually so out of your mind you think that sounds reasonable? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. I'm ending the episode here. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Okay. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm having a great time. And hopefully, I will see you later.